I'm going to be dealing with some trance issues right now. So I'm not going to bother trying to monetize this video because I know it just won't work. And while I'm on the subject of that, I, I just want to make a, a comment to you. Uh, last November I had 25,000 subscribers and now I have 24. It's going down about 10 at a time. And I've noticed a pattern as well. It goes down by 10 or five, between 5 and 10. And then it stays there for a while and then it goes up two or three. And then it goes down again and stays there and then it goes up two or three, and then it goes down again. It's so uh, persistent in that pattern that I am pretty certain that there is something in the YouTube algorithm which is subtracting uh, subscribers. And indeed, I'm getting people saying to me, I'm not getting notifications from you anymore. It's not that they're actually subtracting the subscribers. What they're doing is they're subtracting the notifications and people think I've stopped uh, making videos. This is a constant. It's happening. Now, I have complained about this to uh, YouTube and the people I speak to are all very nice, but they they just send me, you know, those form those form things. It's the same wording every time when they have confirmed the phone conversation. Oh, I'm sorry, the chat conversation. They say, we are sorry you feel so bad about losing subscribers. Uh, but and then they they do. And it's, it's the same thing every time. So obviously they just push a button and do that. Now, it probably means that I'm not the only one. I, I do not suggest I am the only person being victimized by YouTube. But I do think that certain inconvenient people end up in a category that does victimize them. And I'm quite sure they know about this. They're just not telling anyone. Uh, they're not admitting to it. So I want to ask you, first of all, uh, well, first of all, I'm going to say, when it gets below a certain level, I'm going to stop because, well, why should I? It's just getting too much when you see, you know, you, you get slapped so uh, to a certain extent and then you think, you know, I don't want to be slapped anymore. Right. That's the, the first thing. And the second thing is, if you hit that like button, apparently that does shove the algorithm up. So I do appeal to you to do that. OK, and um, let's see. Well, I was going to talk first about this. A person who calls itself Quinn. Uh, this person started off as a woman and has transitioned to be a, well, I don't know. <laughs> and that's the problem. Uh, is she, he, a man or not? If you look at the photo, uh, this person looks like a boy. And <laughs> I am going to be extremely rude here. And my apologies, but a lot of French women look like this. Uh, in fact, I, I have heard people say, oh, for all French women look like boys. No, they don't. But there is a look a certain look which is considered the nice in France, and it is very boyish. And I'm afraid that this uh, this person here does conform very, um, very closely to that ideal. You can see this person has no, uh, no breasts. I assume they've been removed. And she is in the female uh, football team for Canada. Now, this is where I have my, my little problem. You see, this hasn't caused the fuss that the male to female transition person called Laurel Hubbard. She caused more of a fuss because people said, oh, well, she's got an advantage because she spent the first 30 odd years of her life as a man. So she's developed the muscles of the bulk. And indeed, that was her appearance, certainly. This person here, Quinn, who won't uh, uh, refer to him or herself as anything but that, Quinn, and refers to him or herself as they, them, uh, 
And I'm going to use her. I, I do not wish to be insulting to her, but I do. But, you know, out of sheer convenience, this still looks to me like a woman. And she is playing in a woman's team. And so for the purposes of this video, we have to refer to her as a woman, whatever she says. She's in the women's team. And where I have the problem is this. She is in the women's team, but says she is transgender. Fair enough. But why isn't she in the men's team? Well, she's obviously a lot lighter boned and finer framed than your average man. She looks like a 16, 17 year old boy and she's, she, she looks perfectly reasonable as a person. She, she doesn't look in any way uh, unusual in that way. But I want to ask, has she taken testosterone? You see, if she were a, a woman who identified as a woman, uh, taking testosterone would have disqualified her. And I don't know whether that's the case with, uh, with this person as well. You see, because when you take testosterone, it does uh, improve your muscle bulk. It does, uh, it, it may not bring it up to full scale uh, male hormone levels uh, as a, um, a, a birth male who's gone through male puberty and all the rest of it. It's very difficult to come up with the right um, the right terminology here, isn't it? But if she is taking testosterone because she wishes to live as a man, well, that's fair enough, but it's giving her the sort of advantage over other women, which would be illegal if she identified as a woman. And nobody's telling me this. I, I've looked at a few articles and I can't find any reference to this. And indeed, there's no fuss. And I, I don't know why. There's no fuss because, well, why? Uh, the, the team think that she's an advantage to them and they're going to stay quiet? Or uh, the press don't want to be caught embarrassingly wrong footed on this? Or is it because people think, well, it's women's sports, so it's not that important if a woman becomes a man or pretends to be a man or transitions to be a man? Now, I, I, I can't say what it is, actually, but there's, well, yeah, we all know there's something very odd going on here. I'll just read a bit about the article. Canadian footballer Quinn, Quinn, there's a song about Quinn, isn't there? Now, uh, oh, crikey. There's some pop group from the 60s talking about the mighty Quinn. A clown? Anyway, yeah. Uh, Canadian footballer Quinn became the first openly transgender non-binary athlete to win an Olympic medal on Friday in another trailblazing moment as the Tokyo Games for the marginalised community. no. This isn't a trailblazing thing. This is a fashionable thing. It is not a trailblazing thing. And it's just another small step in the journey to confusion that has become the modern, modern sports. You are either representing America or you're not. You are either an American or you're not an American. You are either a woman or you're not a woman. You're a man or you're not a man. There is, there is no absolute anymore, which is very sophisticated. But it means nobody knows where anybody is anymore. And um, I, I'm put in mind of the fact that the Olympic Games, the original Olympic Games, were finally wound up by the Greeks when the level of corruption got to such a point that they decided they couldn't continue. This was not an honourable thing to do. And in my belief, this is what's happening to the Olympics now. They are heading in that same corrupt direction. Not that I am calling these people corrupt. What I'm calling is our way of seeing the world as corrupt, or at least the Olympic Committee. 
Um, now, let's see. Quinn, who goes by the single name and uses the pronouns they and their, started the gold medal match against Sweden, which was run by Canada following a dramatic penalty shootout. The 25-year-old has a long history with the Canadian team, debuting in 2014 and winning bronze at the 2016 Rio Games, but only came out as transgender last year. I wanted to be my authentic self in all spheres of my life, and one of those is being in a public space, Quinn said at the time. Well, look, sorry, Quinn, you are not your authentic self. You are, I don't know what you are. Uh, you may say you're a man, you don't look like a man. And if you are a man, then you shouldn't be playing with a woman's team. In any case, you are not authentic. And in any case, this is something the Olympic Committee is going to have to face eventually. In, in this case, it if this Quinn person is on testosterone, she has been given an advantage. And I'm saying she again because she's playing in a women's team. She has been given an advantage which the uh, uh, Swedish team didn't have. And uh, Laurel Hubbard, she was an attempt by the New Zealand team compilers to give them an advantage. Uh, the fact is it didn't work out. But it still wasn't right. OK, well, that's it. Not monetized. So please, at least you're not getting the adverts unless um, YouTube are. I, I believe that, that they are actually putting adverts on against the will of the, um, the, con the contributors, you know, of, off their own bat and not giving the contributors the money. So if you see an advert, it's not because I uh, of anything I've done. I'm just putting this one straight up without asking for any advertising. But look, let's see what you can do for me in respect of pushing that uh, that like button, whether you like it or not. If you want me to carry on, I've got to get my figures back up. OK, that's it. <laughs> Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Granbo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.